I assembled a list of uh, features to demo, and I could, couldn't put all of them in because I only had a, a few minutes to demo them. But I forgot to put in the um, drag and drop one, so I'm not going to get <laughs> the same round of applause because I haven't got that in my. But the, the Universal Video does support it. Anyway, my name is Tom Crane. Uh, I work for a company called Digerati. I think we're one of those nimble companies that Tom Kramer mentioned at the beginning. I, I hope we are. Um, and we we built the a, a silo, a snowflake for the Wellcome Library um, a few years ago called the Wellcome Player, which they really liked and other people liked, and we made it open source. And it had lots of features like search and authentication and other things, and the ability to play audio and video and porn, porn digital material. And it, it made it open source, and it uh, had quite a few implementations, but it was a snowflake, it was a silo. Um, and then we heard about the wonder of IIIF, and at the same time, the British Library uh, who also really liked the Welcome Player, chose it as the basis of their new Universal Viewer project, which uh, aimed to replace uh, 37 and counting snowflakes that the British Library have in various different silos <laughs> of content. Um, because you know the typical pattern is you get a grant, you digitize some stuff, you build a, a server and a viewer, and then you get another grant and you build another set of sta uh, stack of technology. So anyway, so the British Library are trying to consolidate, and so their Universal Viewer project was born based on the Welcome Player. And there are quite a few contributors to the code base uh, and even more users of the Universal Viewer. Uh, it's getting, getting bigger uh, day by day. So I'm just going to run through as many features as I, can, as I can cram in the time I have available, but not including drag and drop. So first of all, just kind of starting with the basics, obviously we have a two-up viewer. Uh, in this case, again, the presentation API tells the viewer that this work is paged and the viewer knows which way around the pages go and so can present the images as a two-up view, which we can turn off if we don't like that. Um, but because the presentation, presentation API tells the viewer that the, the book is ordered in a certain way, uh, we can present it and recombine the images even though they're, they're separate, separate images, uh, um, separate canvases in a, in a manifest. Just looking at the thumbnails panel a bit more closely there, um, as well as those thumbnails, you can expand the thumbnails out and change the size of them to give you a kind of overview of the structure of the work. You can zoom right in, zoom right out, and that's another interesting way of navigating the content of the work. Um, the more information panel on the right-hand side conveys the rights and licensing information and the uh, other, other bits of metadata that the manifest contains. And the configuration of the Universal Viewer allows you to um, control how that uh, is, uh, is displayed, various configuration settings for that. Um, now, search. I'm going to use two services here. I'm, first of all, I'm typing some letters and getting an autocomplete service about the terms, the words used in this book. And then I'm using the autocomplete to do an actual search. Um, and what's happening here is that the server, which is implementing the IIIF search API, is returning me annotations uh, with the search results in them. And the Universal Viewer understands the annotation format of the search results and, and draws the highlights and allows me to see both the highlight on the text as I zoom in, but also you know, where, where those highlights are within the structure of the work. So I can see that there are one, two, three, four, five hits to, uh, for that word in this book, and I can navigate both within the page and uh, th throughout the work. Um, again, because everything that uh, on the other end is a triple IF image API, I can frame something I like in the viewer and then just grab that as, a, as an image. Uh, that's a URL that I can take away. I can put the image in a Word document, email it to someone, use it you know, wherever I want. Well, I've, you know, I've, I've framed something in the viewer and captured the current view. Uh, if we go back and have another look at that download menu, there are kind of two sections to it. The first section contains things that the viewer can work out from the description of the IIIF resources, such as good sizes to make available for download, including the current view. But if the manifest publisher has as asserted that there are various other renderings of the digital object for download, then they're available too. Uh, in this case, a PDF and raw text version. Um, the Universal Viewer is embeddable, kind of like, you know, imagine in the same way you embed a YouTube video anywhere. So here, a recent acquisition of the Welcome Library achieved, uh, gathered quite a lot of national press attention, and, and the independent newspaper could embed the viewer in a news story about that. So the digital object is carried into a, a news story about, about, this, this, you know, about the item. Um, we, the Universal Viewer supports quite com comprehensive theming. So the Welcome Player, which you, uh, the Universal Viewer on the Welcome Library site, rather, which you've seen already, uh, has these, this livery when it's, when it's used there and various other configuration elements that control the appearance of buttons and text and stuff. 
Um, it's fully internationalizable, uh, so you can have it work in m multiple languages, and that we've already had quite a lot of contributions, uh, the first of which was Welsh, followed by many others um, as the University View has adopted in various places. Um, people have themed the University View quite extensively, so this is the Swedish Reichsarchivet, have, have, have kind of a more extreme theming going on. Uh, this screenshot also shows there are two sources of metadata coming together in the right-hand column there. Both the image or sort of canvas-level metadata and the work-level metadata are being recombined so that you know, one set of metadata will, say, will stay the same for each uh, um, image because it's about the book, um, but one, the other set of metadata will change because it's specific to the image. Um, Christy demoed this briefly earlier. The, um, the IIIF authentication API allows the Wellcome Library to enforce various terms and conditions on the content so that when I accept these terms and conditions, I'm straight in. But there are other kinds of content on the Wellcome Library site uh, for whatever reason that are deemed not suitable for the public. So you have to authenticate properly. In this case, I'm, the Universal Viewer via the, cert, uh, via the authentication API is orchestrating the user's journey through the Wellcome Library's own backend access control server, in this case, a CAS server. And when the, you know, the, the, the process is orchestrated by the authentication API, the user ends up back uh, in, the, in, the, in the, you can't really see that very well, but it's, it, it's, it, they are, you can see the image. Um, here is a multi-volume work, which has been modeled as a IIIF collection. So it's a collection of six separate manifests. The Universal Viewer understands that this is a, a kind of conceptual whole work, but it contains six separate volumes, and it can generate the navigation to navigate across the collection structure as well as within each volume. And we can take that to extremes. This, the work on library has a, uh, I think Christy showed this earlier today, it's a thing called Chemist and Druggist, which is a, essentially a 6,500 volume book, if you're trying to model it as a manifest. And it's also uh, decorated with date metadata. So as Christy demoed, demoed already, you can navigate around the structure of the work across all these different volumes. What we're seeing uh, in the left-hand panel at the moment is the structure that the Work on Library have published about this work, but I can flip to a date-based navigation uh, regardless of the structured, uh, of the published structure of the collection because there is date metadata involved uh, in, in the manifest. And I could use that date meta metadata to generate timelines and things like that. Uh, next one. Uh, here is right to left. So this is uh, this work is in Arabic, and you can see that the flow is of the as I as I read in the natural reading order, the flow is right to left rather than left to right. Um, and you can kind of see this a bit better if I uh, pop into thumbnail mode. Um, well, uh, yeah, it works in two up mode. The the the, the layout is preserved. But if I, and you know, when I look at the thumbnails, they're flowed from right to left as well. And if I scroll down to the bottom where the thumbnails aren't cached, you can see them kind of flowing in from right to left rather than left to right, because that's the reading order of this, of this work. Uh, and you can see there as well, the Universal View is carrying multilingual metadata about this work and displaying it. Uh, top to bottom, I didn't have an example of this to hand, so I, I had to make one up, but it's a kind of more obvious uh, <laughs> presentation sequence. Uh, and this one is a British Library piece of content that is, uh, the presentation API is telling the viewer that this is continuous. Now this is a kind of mock-up, so it's not really very continuous because you can see the joins. But imagine that this uh, was photographed so that the joins were seamless. It's still a manifest that contains uh, 40, 50, 100 separate images. But because they have the continuous viewing hint, the Universal Viewer is able to combine them uh, and, and present them as a single interface. And it's a bit slow to load this from the British Library, so I, it stayed a bit blurred, but in theory, you get a continuous, seamless viewing experience over a, a huge, long scroll. Um, now, just to finish, uh, I mentioned that the Welcome Library's previous player uh, played audio, video, born digital material. You know, we, we wanted to replace that player with the Universal Viewer as soon as we could, but we couldn't do that until we at least had some kind of placeholder mechanism for, you know, for, for carrying on providing the, the non-image-based material. So, Rather than try and kind of preempt the community process for, for what uh, that looks like, we just kind of uh, came up with an interim data model based on the existing uh, um, presentation API that allows us to carry uh, enough information for the viewer to play a PDF in this case, or a video in this case. This is, this is the building currently occupied by the Welcome Library and Collection, uh, I assume in about 1953, um, and also and the thing that Ed Silverton, the lead developer of the Universal Viewer has been working on recently is adding 3D support. Now we don't have a kind of community use case driven data model for this yet, but the Universal Viewer is ready 
when you know, as that emerges, it's ready to, to, to adopt that model for, for display of, uh, of, of all sorts of other content. And that's it. The Universal Viewer is open source and is at that GitHub address. And you can see some at that second link, you can see lots of examples, uh, including some of the ones we've seen here, but lots and lots of other material to show you the different ways in which the Universal Viewer presents Triple F based material. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>